Hi, good morning, how are you? Hope you're well. It's just a short video today. I'm sorry about the uh, problem with the synchronization of the sound and the video yesterday. It's, uh, if you watch yesterday's video, it uh, started all right at the beginning and then, and it was wrong at the end. So what I did was I dragged, I dragged it, I stretched the sound a bit so that it was all right at the end and then didn't realize that it wasn't all right in the middle. So, and the problem is when this, this the, the problem is the phone. The phone decides it's going to do something else, and so what happens is it uh, it sort of carries on recording the video and stops recording the sound for half a second, and then doesn't realise it's done it. So the whole thing gets out of synchronisation. There's nothing you can do other than go through it all minute by minute and try and check and stretch and cut and stretch it a bit more, you know, back. Anyway, as I say, the uh, video is not that uh, relevant really. So. Uh, but no, I just wanted to say, uh, add something to my uh, sort of my com commentary yesterday on the sort of the downfall of the National Health Service, the uh, the system that sort of decides is now starting to decide that the solution to a three-unit bridge is to do a crown on one of the abutments and then another, then a bridge on the other abutment and pontic where you've got the six cantilevered off the five. And um, you know, and, and also the system that decides that where you've got three teeth missing, then uh, you just put in a one-tooth denture because there's only one right at the front, so that's the only one that's obvious that the patient then can't wear. So uh, I've had a chat with someone who sort of told me what's going on on the technical side, and the technical side's just as bad. Um, Apparently on the NHS you can get three, uh, you ban three course of treatment, 12 UDAs for doing a mouth guard. So we're now uh, towards, coming towards the end of March and obviously the UDA year finishes on the 30th of March. So people are starting to get really desperate, you know. Um, they don't want to lose their UDA quota for next year or have it downgraded and they don't but more, more importantly, and the reason, the motivating factor is not so much to preserve the UDA quota, it's because they've already been paid for the work. You know, they're paid in year for the year's work. So they've had, in anticipation of the number of UDAs they're going to do, they've already had the money and it's been chopped up into 12 installments and paid to them monthly. And so a failure to reach the target involves a refund. And there's nothing more, nothing guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> to upset a dentist more than the thought of having to give back some money that they've had for work even though they haven't done the work and so so the solution is in their minds is just to do the work whatever whatever and, and, and it is a very big whatever you know and to give you an idea of how big that whatever is the uh, the technician I was talking to told me about a case a recent NHS case where someone had sent over uh, impressions for a full full and they hadn't even recorded the palette on the upper they got the gums but not not the palette so <clears throat> and that in itself is bad enough how a, how a dentist could send over a set of impressions for a full full and not and obviously realize obviously realize I'm not going to say perhaps they didn't realize that they didn't have the obviously they realized they didn't have the palette But why would they send them over anyway? And the answer is that because they, they just want the dentures made. And what they do is they always tell the technician the same thing, just do your best, just do your best, just do your best. And but doing your best means making it up. If you send over a set of impressions and it doesn't have the palette on it for a full full. Now I haven't got to the best bit yet, right? Because this was to go straight to a fit. Yeah, you didn't hear incorrectly that this was to go straight to a fit so he sent over some impressions that didn't have the palette a shade and asked it to go straight to the fit in other words no bite no you know no uh, try in no sign off of the appearance no uh, no no nothing no nothing okay I'm running I'm running out of ways to try and describe this okay because I can't 
I can't even put it in the context of the dental profession I knew, you know. My only consolation is that you don't go from being good to being crap overnight, yeah. It's taken the profession probably 30 years. You, it happens slowly. But it does happen. If that's what's, if it's encouraged and not picked up on and, you know, and it's allowed, then it will happen. But it doesn't, a dentist who's used to doing something to a certain standard doesn't, doesn't immediately decide just to lower their standards. They'll lower them slowly over a number of years or they'll retire and they'll be replaced by another dentist who's got lower standards or has been taught lower standards or more likely has been, is told to adopt lower standards. You know, it's shown that lower standards are a requirement under the current system. So, so what's the idea? Well, the idea obviously is just to get this full, full in, isn't it? Before the March the 30th. And if you're gonna take the impressions on March the 21st or something, there's no way you're gonna get that full denture fitted. And presumably into the financial year 2017, 2018, uh, if you do it properly, you know, you'd have to do, you'd have to do like one step a day and they didn't, they're just not gonna do that, so. So, what's what's going on you know they're just someone's just slapped some alginate in someone's mouth and said um you know i'll make you a new set of dentures I, i'm not even sure that the person who's having these dentures made wants them they might not i'm going to give them credit and say that they they probably know that they're getting them i'm not saying i'm not going so far although it's not that far to say that the the patient doesn't even know they're having dentures made for them. Although that would explain a lot, wouldn't it? And that would explain a lot, right? That would, actually, now I've come to think of it, that would effing well explain the whole effing thing, wouldn't it? If the patient doesn't even know they're getting the dentures, that would explain why they don't need the pallet. That would explain why they don't need the bite and the try-in. That would explain why they don't care what the technician does and just says, just make me a set of dentures. I don't care what they look like. If the patient doesn't know that they're getting the dentures, that would explain it all, wouldn't it? Talk about a blinding flash. Talk about a blinding flash. But <laughs> just for a second, <laughs> Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the patient does know that they're going to get them, and then the dentures are are going to be fitted to to someone, and it's not just blatant fraud. God, how, how much stupid am I? How stupid am I? Uh, that uh, you know, the idea is that uh, they they put them in, and and of course the bite's going to be incorrect and that they just grind them in. And then put, and, and, and because the, the technician was saying that he has had requests from dentists to characterize, what he calls characterize the teeth. And that is basically where they've just ground the back teeth flat on a lathe. And uh, now they want the technician to put some tooth like, the patient doesn't want flat teeth. They want a few points, pointy bits. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking about my profession like this. I never thought we'd sink this low. I never thought we'd sink this low. And unfortunately, I think I don't think we've bottomed out yet. I think there's going to have to be some massive scandal. But I can't see how so this sort of scandal at this level is going to get exposed. It's not, you know, this is just day-to-day -day skullduggery that goes on. So, uh, yeah, but, um, you know, but it's all very well the dentist saying, oh, yeah, well, don't worry what the bite looks like, I'll grind them in. Obviously, how are you going to get the right, the correct appearance from the front? You know, how are you going to get the right amount of lip support? How are you going to get the, uh, how are you going to get the palate right? If you're having to guess the palate. I mean, if the palate's not up against the palate, then how are you gonna you can't change that you can't just grind the pallet in can you so which is you know at least me now 
to suspect that they may not be going in. And also the other thing is that it may be that um, it may be that uh, these dentures are being made on the basis that they're sort of just been commoditized. Now that they're, it's a 250 quid for, for a new denture and it may be that um, people are having one a year, you know, on the basis that they might get one that works really well and they might get, or they might get another one that doesn't work so well. So they don't bother with that one. They stick with the one that they've got and then perhaps in another year's time, try another one, you know. There must be a limit to how frequently you can make people dentures, I assume. Not that it really costs the state much now. I mean, dentistry, I know cumulatively it costs a lot, but you know, the amount of money that the state is putting into the treatment, into treatments is, is nothing really compared to what the cost would be if it was all done properly. Do you want to go? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's all right. She stalled it, never mind. Yeah, so you know that's on the so on the lab side we've got like a, a constant procession of uh, bike guards coming through, and we've got a constant procession of uh, uh, dentures where, where there's a very big question mark over whether or not um, there some may be may not be destined to go anywhere near a patient. I, I, I'll be interested to know how you take an impression of someone's mouth without saying to them, I'm going to make you a set of dentures. Well, I mean, what do you use as the excuse? What excuse would you have for taking impressions of someone who needs a set of full dentures without implying that you're going to make some full dentures for them, you know? I don't know whether you tell them that you're just doing a research project or you need to practice taking impressions. They obviously do need to practice taking. And anyway, who takes an impression without doing the palette on a full upper? I mean, how is that? It's it's actually it's actually quite difficult, I would say, to get things done that badly. How would you? Under what circumstances would an impression be done that was that bad? You know, would would it be would it be literally lack of time? Would would someone who had a hundred patients queuing up in the waiting room for impressions do impressions that bad? It, it's it, it just I'm gobsmacked about it because. You, you know, I mean, okay, you might save a bit of impression. Are, are they short of impression material? <laughs> I just can't understand. Somebody please explain this to me. Are they, do they have no, do they not know that the palette is, is, has to be on the impression? Are they badly trained? You know, they're not really gonna save, they might save a bit of time by, by perhaps not doing a second, in, uh, doing it again when they can see that it's not right. But they're not going to save any time by doing it wrong in the first place, are they? Because the impression material takes just as long to set if it doesn't have a palette than if it does. Oh, that's my lovely nurse, Rachel. Right. Anyway, uh, just an update, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye.